Good afternoon, everyone. I can't quite believe it's that time of year again. It only seems like yesterday that we were doing 2022 Advent calendar. Um, this is my first of five Advent hours during December, and we've got some incredible pieces coming up. But today we're going to all, if you've got your Advent calendar at home with you, we're going to be opening day four. Now, if any of you watched Jewelry Maker this morning, you will know what is in number four and the fact that it's probably the most jm old school product in the in the the entire advent calendar and i'm absolutely thrilled to be given it in one of my days so let's have a look what we've got for those of you who haven't seen yet so day number four here we go okay so we've got number four i'm not going to show you just yet put that to one side so as i said you can't get more old school jewelry maker than a genuine gemstone bead scoop. Here we go, and you get a lot. And as I said, these are all gemstones. There's no seed beads, there's no glass. It's all 100% genuine gemstones. And I had a quick look earlier. It's completely different to the piece, to the bag that I got when I had mine to do the sample jewelry. And I'm noticing already that we've got micro faceted in here. We've got chips and nuggets. We've got rounds. We've got some lava kite in here, I think. We've got some lava rock. We've even got, look in this look, we've even got a little druzy. And I think you get 100 grams altogether. What else have we got? We've got long teeth nuggets here. We've got rounds. We've got some morganite in here. We've got some turquoise. So hematite Buddha heads. What else have we got in here? Hematite we've got in here. We've got some sodalite. We've got some jaspers. We've got these amazing, I think they look like, I think they must be hematite, I would have thought. These amazing ovals. Got quite a few of those. We've got some little pillows. That looks like bronzite to me. Or No, actually, that could be opal. That looks like opal to me. That looks beautiful. Got opal there. And we've got some, some African jaspers. We've got all sorts of things in here. So what I thought I would do is for my piece that I made for the advent calendar, I made a rosary link long nine necklace. So what I'd do, I thought I'd show you how to start your rosary link necklace. And then I was deciding on the drive in this morning what else I would show you to form part of that necklace. So as well as the rosary linking for beginners, I'm then going to show you how to cage your gemstones. I'm going to show you how to make your own wire wrapped bead caps either end of your gemstone, I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you a quick little herringbone technique as well to add extra embellishments to your gemstones. And if we've got time, because I've only been given an hour, if we've got time, we're going to do a quick, simple macrame friendship bracelet as well. So these are the pieces that I originally made from my, my uh, bag that I was sent to my home. So you can see on the right, we've got the rosary link, the London Nine necklace, and then you can see we've got those ovals that I had in mind that I filled with other gemstones from the bag. So apart from your gemstone bag, I've mentioned it on my Jewelry Maker Facebook page, some of the tools and equipment that you might need. So we're going to need, first of all, three gauges of wire. You're going to need your six millimeter gauge, your 0.6 millimeter, your 0.4 millimeter, and your 0.8. So those are the three gauges of wire. I've gone all for the same color, I've gone for gold, it's entirely up to you which colour you go for. Then I've gone for various findings from my stash at home. So I've got some toggle clasps, I've got some head pins, some featherweight head pins, shepherd's hooks, and I've even got some chain and some jump rings as well. So, so most of these you should have in your stash. And again, I've gone for gold, but you could go for silver or rose gold if you wanted to. And then as I said, if we have time, we're going to make a little friendship bracelet and in here I've got some S-long cord and this is in your 0.9 and your 0.5 gauges, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sort through our bead scoop bag and this is just to give you some insight in what I do at home when I get a bead scoop bag, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate all of the rounds, okay? So all of the different sizes. So just quickly whiz through and take and put to one side all of the rounds. So this, this is part of the fun because you, you spend all that extra time just seeing what you've got and matching pairs and all sorts of things. So I've actually got quite a nice selection in here. There's a jadeite there, look. That's a bit of a find. 
and then we've got more lava rock and then we've got as i said we've got the buddha head we've got some agates we've got some onyx some spinels there we've got one of those ripply open gemstones there so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly rush through and take out all the rounds to start i've got amber in here i've got bronzite unikite there's another mukite there we've got that's a lapis a few more unikites another amber oh we've got a um a coated labradorite there and again we've got these we've got seven of those ovals now i'm just going to check which way they're drilled they're drilled from top to bottom so if you wanted to you've got enough there to make a rosy relink bracelet if you wanted to oh there's another there's some more there Look, that's seven of those we've got all together so i'm just still going with my rounds there's some faceted ones there i'll put that oval to one side so i'm sure many of you watching do this exact same job when you get your bead scoops so have we got any more let's go for more rounds there's another hematite cylinder there i think that's a bloodstone there and then we've got our chips and nuggets. We've got some more hematites. got some amber chips. I've not seen amber chips for such a long time. Got some amber rounds. Gosh, we still, we've got some hematite. I'm going to use that one. What else have we got in here? That's another hematite. Which way is the drill hole? That's going top to bottom, so I can use that. And then we've got all our chips. There's some more rounds. Every time you look, you find more. So we've got, there's a bicone there. We've got a blue round there. More amber, more hematite. So we've taken out all of our rounds. So we're left with chips and nuggets. So my chips and nuggets, I would do with a Kumihimo piece, or I would do um, some um, macrame with that, or a bit of crochet, or pop them onto your memory wire bangles. There's another round. There's another, so you, do, you just keep finding them. You think you're finished, and then you find some more. Okay, there's another cylinder. I'm gonna use that, that's a little wheel. So anything else I can, oh, there's another round, there's a sodalite round, there's another hematite. Oh, there's a tanzanite there, we've got tanzanite. That's amazing. There's another tanzanite, more bronzite and unikite. It's never ending, look, look at all this. Prenite, oh, I can't remember the last time I saw prenite. We've got microfaceted gem gemstones in here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all those to one side and I'm going to use those chips and nuggets for other projects. There's another one, there's another one. And then, honestly, right, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. So I'm going to put all of this into a bead tray. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to find, see if we've got any matching beads. And the reason I choose the matching beads, first of all, is if I wanted to make a pair of earrings. So let's bring these all across and let's see if we've got any matching pairs. So there's a matching pair straight away. Have we got any others? There's a matching pair. Perfect, there's another matching pair. So this is the first thing I always do, and I know lots of the viewers do this at home as well when they get their gemstones. So let's see what else we've got. There's an Amazonite there, that's amazing, my favorite gemstone. So let's see if we've got any others. This is part of the joy, as I said, just having a little play, a little peruse, there's another pair. So because you've now got all of these, these pairs, you see, you can then, there's another one there, look. You can then go in, there's two, there's two green lava rocks there. This is lovely because I've got, I've got lovely director Adam in my ear and, and he's looking closely on his monitor and he can see pairs as well. So it's fantastic. Okay, so all those pairs I will then keep separately into one place and they're going to be other projects. So I've got a nice range and I'm gonna keep one special bead for my friendship bracelet where if we get time to do some macrame at the end. So I'm gonna, obviously I'm gonna go for the Amazonite without a shadow of a doubt. So we've got a nice, mix and we've got different sizes of gemstone so i'm just going to put these pairs to one side and then we can start with our rosary linking so what i'm going to do i'm going to keep two of those as well and we'll see if we can make some earrings so as i said we've got seven of these little ovals which are more than enough to do a rosary link bracelet and it's up to you whether you fill the interior or leave it completely empty or blank Okay, so we're just going to pop those in there. Okay, so this is the start of our, our necklace. So we've got a nice mix, a nice range. So when we, get, when we now come to do a rosary link long line necklace, I don't like to have the sizes together. I like to do a complete mix and match. So what I do is I fold them all up in one hand. And all I'm going to do is I'm not going to look at what I'm picking up. I'm simply going to pick up in a row without throwing them around. 
and you get a nice mix. So what I try to do is not have two colors the same together. I like to have them separate. So let's go for a purple and let's go for that big yellow and let's pop a little jadeite in there and then a blue and then a brown. And then we just pop in sporadically some of the smaller stones just to break it up. Okay, so just pop those in. Okay, so that's, that's the general idea. So what, once you've laid out your larger gemstones, then you can start on the smaller ones that you might have missed just to fill in the little gaps. Have a last little peruse to make sure that you've got no, see that, um, that lava rock there is very similar to that hematite. So I will take that out and let's pop in the jadeite, a jadeite bicone, honestly. Look at, okay, so that seems a nice range. And then just need to make sure that you've got the larger beads nicely spaced out as much as you can. Okay, so I'm gonna pop those to one side and I'm not, I'm gonna keep that one there. That's a lovely bead. So this is where your, your bead board, so I'm using a bead board here and it's got all those different compartments. So these are the rounds that I'm gonna use in other projects. We've got our ovals there that we're going to use for a bracelet. We've got our pairs that we can use for our earrings and then we've got our leftovers, our chips and nuggets for other chip and nugget products. Okay, so for our rosary link basic necklace, we're going to need a pair of round nose pliers and we're also going to need a pair of flat nose pliers and also some wire cutters. Okay, now these feature in our brand new toolkit. Okay, that um, we only launched this morning. I believe the, the graphics are just coming in now. So it's brand new launch today. It comes in this beautiful pleather folder and inside you get six tools. Now we mentioned on the show this morning that these are, these are, these are larger handled. Okay, there's the price on your screen and your code for you there. You get your wire cutters, you get your round nose, you get your chain nose, you get your flat nose. For the first time, I've, I've not seen these in a, in a kit before, but you get nylon jaw coated pliers. And then you also get then your bent nose pliers for, we, we mentioned on the show today that it is perfect for doing your, your chain mail because you get that lovely bent curve up. So this is our brand new six piece set, which you'll see on the show over the December month, no doubt. But the three, the three tools that I'm going to use today in the demo are your, your chain nose, your round nose, and your wire cutters. So we're just going to basically do a simple rosary link. Now, depending on this, A, the size of the gemstone, and B, if you've rosary linked before, depends on the gauge of wire that you would use. So the three gauges that I mentioned at the beginning of the hour that I use are your 0.6, your 0.4, and your 0.8. Now, I have tried to rosary link with 0.8. It's even for me, um, it's quite tough. And I found it really difficult to get nice, neat curls with your 0.8. But we will be using the 0.8 later on when we come to do the caging. So if you're new to rosary linking, definitely recommend starting with your 0.4. It will go through most of your gemstone drill holes. And also, it, it, it's, it's less hard wear, wearing on your hands. So I will definitely start with your 0.4 get to know the technique and then move up to your 0.6. Now 0.6 is what I call my desert island gauge. I would use this, if I had no other gauges of wire at all, I would use my 0.6. So if ever you see 0.6 on the show, snaffle it because we don't have it on very often, unfortunately. And for me, this is good for rosary linking, for wire macrame, for all of your wire weaving. Um, you prob it's probably not strong enough to make your jump rings, whereas your 0.8 gauge wire, that would be perfect for making your jump rings if you were going to do a um, a jump ring project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a manageable length of our 0 0.6. And I tend to take about a foot, about 30 centimeters. And we're just going to cut that. And then what we're going to do then is we're just going to straighten out our wire. Now you have your nylon jaw pliers now, so you can use those if you want to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all use my round nose pliers. So those of you who've not worked with round nose pliers before, as you can see, they're quite self-explanatory. They've got two mandrels with a wide base that go, go to a point of a cone, okay? And this, these are what I use for making all my wrap loops, or you can use these for making your multi-size jump rings if you wanted to as well. So, first of all, we're going to take our pliers. Now, I've been rosary linking for quite a few years now, and, and I, my sort of sixth sense seems to tell me where to put the wire in the jaws. If you would like your wrap loops to be exactly the same size every rosary link, you can take a permanent marker pen and just mark your pliers 
So then every time you come to do a rosary link, you'll just place that wire in that mark. And it, it just, it will just make sure that you have the same size wrap loops every time you do it, okay? So an inch from the end of your wire, I'm gonna take a short little tail, I'm going to bring it towards me, and I'm going to veer off. Can you see I'm veering off to the left all the way over? So you can feel it flattened against your round nose pliers. So when you take it off, you can see now that we have a perfect right angle with a loop. So now we're going to swap to our chain nose or our flat nose pliers. And can you see we've got the, can you see there's a cross, a definite cross? So we're going to take our pliers and we're going to hold, we're not going to go into the loop this time, we're going to hold the loop just to the right of the cross. So you can just see the cross on the inside. And then we're going to take that little wire and we're going to wrap it three times. So once, twice, three times around the long tail. And I'm just going to straighten up that little loop. So you can now see that we've got the three coils and we've got our little tail. So with our wire cutters, we're going to cut off that little tail. So you can see how easily that came off. So there we have a wrapped loop which is probably one of the most used of the loops that I use on my jewellery making. I've probably made hundreds of thousands of this particular little, little loop. So we're going to choose our gemstone. So let's start with, let's go, this is another part, let's go for that faceted hematite. So all we're going to do is we're going to slide that bead onto our wire. And then what we're going to do then is we need to replicate the space that you've made with your three coils the other side of your gemstone. And again, this, this will be something that uh, will become force of habit as you, the more you do your rosary linking. So again, we're going to take our round nose pliers. We're going to place it in. So there's my maybe, I think that's probably about three millimeter, three millimeter gap. So that's going to replicate the space, the other side that we made with the first coil. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take this longer wire, exactly the same, we're going to bring it towards me, we're going to veer off to the left, and hook it underneath the plier. So you can now see when I take that off, we've got our right angle that we had right at the beginning and we've got our loop. So we're going to do exactly the same. So we're going to swap to our flat nose pliers. We're going to hold the loop just to the right of the cross. And then we're going to take that long wire and we're going to wrap three times, okay? So one, two, three. And if you find that you've not left enough room, what happens is when you come to do your third coil, it will push the gemstone down against the first coil. So then when I cut that wire off, again, using your wire cutters, okay, then we straighten up our little link, you will see that that is absolutely perfect either side, okay? So don't, don't worry if you've not left enough room, just make sure that the force of your wire wrapping your third coil will just push down on the gemstone. So that is a rosary link. So now we're going to start our rosary chain. Exactly the same technique. So we first of all use our round nose pliers. Again, same position, which is, I normally go about half a centimetre, five mil in, and that's probably a good place to, to do your loop. Exactly the same start, so we take our short tail, bring it towards me, veer off to the left, push it up against the flat of those pliers and slide it off. So there we are, we've got, again, we've got our right angle with our little loop. Now if you were making another link, you would just repeat what I've just made, but we want to start making a chain so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the link we've just made and we're going to slide it on the little tail and then we're going to pull it so it sits inside that little loop. Can you see it's, it's trapped in that loop and it's free falling, it, it moves, but it, we've, we've captured it. So that's now in that loop. So we're going to move on to our flat nose pliers again. Exactly the same, we're going to go to the right of the cross and then we're going to wrap three times, so that's once, twice, three times. We're going to cut off our tail. So flip that over. Get this little cut. Okay, so we've now got our first link trapped in half of the next link. So we're gonna choose our next gemstone. So let's go for a biggie, let's go for this yellow lava rock. So again, we're gonna slide that down, 
look how much space you left with your three, first three coils. And then using our round nose pliers, we're going to go in. Again, that's about the same distance. Bring the wire towards you. Off to the left, pull nice and tight so it stands, sits against those plier mandrels. Swap to your flat nose pliers to the right of the cross. And then we're going to wrap once, twice, three times. So we're going perfect. So straighten that out. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to cut that little tail like so. Okay, so you can see now that our chain is starting. So we'll do one more. Inch from the top, half a centimetre into the wire, wire towards me, veer off to the left, all the way over, and just push the wire down onto your mandrel. Got your right angle with the loop, flat nose pliers, then we're going to go in and we're going to tie our coil. So one, two, three. Now I've done something on purpose there to see if you were paying attention watching. So what have I done? What I've done is I've wrapped the loop before I added it to the chain. I've done this so many times. I've even done this on the show many times as well, but don't fret. You don't have to cut that off and start again because all we're going to do is we're going to perform the action, but in reverse. So we've added our coil. Which gemstone should we go for next? Let's go for the jadeite. He says, just pick up a jadeite. We're going to thread that on. We're going to slide it down. Okay. Pop your round nose pliers in again, same distance. We're going to do our coils, but what we're going to do is we're going to stop. We're going to take that off. Then we're going to slide our already made section on. So we're just going to slide that down, feed it on, sits in the loop. Then with your flat nose pliers, we're going to go in, hold on to where the wires cross, and then we're going to wrap once, twice, three times. And then we can go back in and cut our wires right so so if you find and it will happen I guarantee it will happen that if you find that you you finish your coil before you've added your gemstone don't fret because you can you can do that when you come to do the second part so let's do a couple more so inch from the top half a centimeter in and as I said earlier if there's nothing stopping you just putting a little mark with a permanent marker pin on there just so that you, you find that your coils are the same size every time so all the way over, so we've got our right angle with a loop. Now what, another thing that I tend to do is if, do you remember this was the end that we started. So if you want to follow that routine without mixing them up, because you may want to do alternate colors or you may want to graduate in size. So what you could do is cut off a piece of wire about two inches long and just simply feed it through the loop of your first gemstone, fold it in half and just give a couple of little twists. And then you know that that is the beginning because nothing more infuriating when you've got a design laid out and then you forget where you are and you add beads to this side when they should have been this side so just from adding that tiny little bit of waste wire just to one end and that adds, acts as a marker so you know that that's the beginning and then you'll continue with your your beading okay so i'm going to pick up my coil i'm going to pop that on and then i'm going to take my flat nose pliers to the right of the cross and then we're going to do our coils one two and three and as you're working with your wire you're also warming it up and you're softening it in as well so you'll find that um, as you go through your length of wire it will become more malleable and easier to use as well so adam who's watching in the gallery which one shall i go for now you choose yes which one do you fancy this one, well, that's, that's green, that's jade dart. I could do the blue. Do you fancy the blue, this big blue one here? Okay, so I think that's an appetite. So I'm gonna thread that on. Perfect combination, look. And just, just, just as you're doing this type of necklace, just make sure that then you haven't got two sizes or two colors the same next to each other. So we're going to go in, again, same distance from the, from the bead, bring your wire over, veer off to the left, and then we're going to go in Pull it nice and straight, 
pick up your flat nose pliers and then finish off your one, two, three coils. So you can see now we're getting, to the, we're getting the hang of this now. They're perfectly equal both sides. So we're going to cut our wire off like so. And I've got just enough wire there to do another bead. So let's go, for, I'm gonna go for this red one. That's a bit dramatic, isn't it? So I'm going to pick up, always, always try not to waste wire if you can. Um, so if you're doing something like this, if it will fit in the pattern, just drop down a size. If I use a large bead, there may not be enough wire, but you can always pop on a little small bead if you want to. So we're going to go in, centimetre, half a centimetre from the end, inch of wire, start our right angled loop, like so. Then we're going to take our last section, thread it on, let it drop inside, flat nose pliers, go in and then we're going to two, three. So that's our three coils. Go in and cut nice and neatly. And then we're going to go for this tiny little red one. As you can see, the 0.6, it goes on pretty much all of your, your gemstones. And you can see already it's how quickly that's starting to build up. So we're going to go in. Again, a similar sort of distance from the bead towards me. Veer off to the left. Hold on to that little loop and you're going to wrap three times. That's one, two, and three. Okay, so we've got our little links. Cut that wire off. There we go. So we've already got our B. So just, just double check that you're happy with the layout. It won't, it won't take you two minutes just to cut a link out and add another gemstone if you wanted to. So now I'm going to show you a little more because that, that's your basic rosary linking to make your rosary chain. So what I'm going to show you now is how to wire cage one of your gemstones. So I'm going to go for, and I've got gold wire, I've got a red piece, I'm going to go for this purple. Uh, uh, that looks like a 10 mil to me, okay? So that's a 10 millimeter round. So as I mentioned earlier, to do your wire caging, you're going to need 0.8 millimeter wire. Okay, so I'm staying with gold. I'm just going to cut a, a length off. Like so. You will you still need your six millimeter, so don't, don't lose that. Keep it to one side. And there's a little rule when you're caging. Whatever size the gemstone is in millimeters, this is actually, an eight, looking at it, it looks like an eight mil. So whatever size your gemstone is in millimeters, you cut a length of wire one digit less in, in centimeters. So make that clearer. You've got an eight millimeter gemstone. So you cut a seven centimeter length of wire. If you have a 12 millimeter gemstone, you cut an 11 centimeter length of wire, okay? So 12, 11, eight, seven, six, five, et cetera, et cetera. And if you stick by that rule, you'll have a perfect cage every time you come to do your caging. So I'm gonna go for the eight mil. So I've got a small macrame board here, which has centimeters on. So we know it's going to be seven because we've got an eight millimeter gemstone. Okay, so we're going to go in and we're going to cut our piece of wire. So that's seven centimeters in length. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is we just, we're going to find the center of our piece of wire. You can do it by eye or use your ruler. And we're just going to give the tiniest of little dents. So you can see we've got a little dent in the center. And then what we're going to do, we're going to start at one end and for your caging, you're going to need round nose pliers. So I'm going to pick up my wire and at one end, I'm going to go right to the very end of the wire and to the very, very end tip of your pliers and we're just going to make a little loop. Okay, so it looks like a letter P at the end of your wire. And then using our flat nose pliers, what we're going to be doing is called, you can, you can have a tight coil or an open coil, and we, for, the, for caging, you need something called an open coil. So I'm going to hold that loop in my hand, and in lots of small movements, I'm just going to turn. So I'm holding the wire with my left hand, and I'm turning my right arm and you can see that we've got 
I call it a snail swirl, but I think its, it's proper term is a coil. So I'm just going to wrap and keep wrapping and keep wrapping till you get to that center. And you need, it needs to be open like that. If you find that as you're doing this move, it tightens and the, the wires actually sit alongside each other, just use your pliers or your fingers and just prise it open. Okay, but your caging won't work if it's not an open swirl. Then what we do is we go to the other end and we need to take, make our top little loop in the other direction. So at the moment, we've got all of the coil on the left. So here we want all of the coil on the right. So I'm gonna hold it in my hand and making sure that that coil is uppermost. Back to my round nose pliers. Place again at the tip of the wire and at the tip of the round nose pliers and I'm going to make a loop. Okay, so just make sure this the, the left hand loop goes clockwise and this goes clockwise but, but underneath, if that makes sense. Flat nose pliers, I'm going to go in and I'm just going again, small movements making sure you leave spacing in between. You want a, between two, probably two millimeters is, is a good distance. So after you've done a couple, just let go and just double check that that seems to be in the right position. So we're going to go around again. And I think we're pretty much there. So in effect, you have a, a coiled letter S. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take the both ends in our thumb and index finger. And with our index finger on our other hand, we're just going to squish the center. And what we want is a right angle. So in effect, it looks a bit like, like a clamshell. Okay, so can you see? And then what we're going to do is we're gonna take our gemstone and we're going to place it inside. That will happen. We're gonna place it inside our coil. And we're simply going, using our nails, we're going to fold the coil sections around the gemstone. Okay, so we've got our cage and then we've got our gemstone sat inside. So that's it caged. So now we need to attach that to our rosary linking chain that we've been making. But at the moment, there's nothing to attach that to. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of our 0.6 that I said that we would need Uh, for my point 0.8, here's my point 0.6. Let's cut a, another piece of that. Okay, so just feed that through. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, again, exactly the same place. We're going to start our link. We're going to feed it onto our existing rosary linking chain. Feed that on. Flat nose pliers. We're going to do our three coils. So one, two, three. That's our three coils. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our wire and we're just going to manipulate the drill hole of the gemstone so that it sits directly underneath that tiny little we made right at the beginning. And we're just going to, there we go. So we're going to manipulate it. And with any luck, you should come through the other side of the gemstone up through that coil. So we've gone, if imagine, through the tiny little loop we made at the beginning, and we've gone through the gemstone and we've exited the other side. So we're gonna slide that down and we're gonna treat this caged bead, just give it a few little movements if you're not happy with the overall shape. I'm, I'm quite happy with that cage. And then we can go in and we're going to treat this caged bead as though it was an ordinary gemstone. So I'm going to go back in, leave the same distance, that two to three millimetres, wire towards us, veer off to the left, hook it underneath, and then revert to our flat nose pliers, hold the loop where the cross is, and then we're going to do our three loops. So one, two, and three and that will sit nice and neatly either side. And then we're just going to cut our wire. And there we see we have our caged gemstone, still part of our rosary chain. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick ordinary link on the other side of that. So round those pliers, half a centimeter inch from the top, 
right angled with the loop. You'll find yourself saying this mantra over in your head as you're doing this if you've, if you've just learnt the technique. Thread the bead on, flat nose pliers, and then we're going to do our coils, like so. Cut our tail off, like so. So that's our next link. So let's go for, so we've got a bright pink. So let's go for, let's pop in that bicone. We've got a jadeite bicone. So you can use any shape, any size of gemstone to use your, on your next chain. So we'll finish this dink off. Okay, so we're going to go in, over, veer off to the left. Hold with your flat nose. And then we're going to do our three coils. So one, two, and three. Okay, so that's nicely attached and we've got our caged bead nicely wedged into our design. So we're going to then cut that off. Okay, so just take our wire off. There we go. So we've got our basic rosary link chain. Then we've got our caged bead. So next I'm going to show you another little motif. So I'm going to show you how to put bead caps either end of your gemstone using one piece of wire. And again, this will be 0.8. So I'm now going to go for, I'm going to go for this blue, I think. I think this is a, um, this is a uh, quartzite. I'm going to go for the blue. So put that chain to one side. Um, got my piece of 0.8. Now you will need for this one, where's my 0.8? There we go. You will need quite a long length of this. So I always use my macrame, my large macrame board, which I use as, as a desk cushion at home. And I take a piece the length, which is about 40, between 35 and 40 centimeters in length, which seems quite a lot, but, but you will use a lot of the wire. Okay, so you've got your piece of wire. So I'm gonna hold with my round nose pliers. Okay, and I'm going to make a start of a wrapped loop. So that's a very big right angle, but it's still a right angle. I'm going to go in and I'm going to, using my flat nose pliers, I'm going to do my three coils. So one, two, and three. So that's my three coils, just straighten out that excess wire. And then I'm going to pop on my gemstone like so, and I'm going to repeat the same the other side, but just be warned, this piece of wire will be floating around, so just, just be ever so careful. It doesn't matter, what I tend to do is I just bend it out of the way, because we can straighten it up afterwards. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to do it. So this is a rosary link, this isn't part of the chain as yet. So it's exactly the same, so you're gonna hold where the cross is, then you're going to do your three wrapped loops and you'll find that you have one if I lay this down you have one piece of wire sticking out in towards you and the other piece away from you so what we're going to do is we're going to hold on to in your flat nose pliers one of the loops it doesn't matter which end you start from and all we're going to do is gently let's move this out of the way is gently just wrap so where in the last caging, I told you to have an open loop. With this one, we're gonna have a closed loop. So can you see, if I just angle that just right, you can see that closed snail swirl. So it's going to go all the way around, all the way around. Okay, so you can see now we've got our bead cap on one end. So I'm going to cut that like so. So that's your one end of your bead cap. And then what we're going to do then is repeat the same the other end. So we're going to go in and then we're going to take our piece of wire and we're just going to gently, you don't have to put too much pressure, just gently wrap, keeping the snail swirls nice and tight, like so, and try to replicate. You can count if you want to the number of swirls, but as you can see, we've got two, four, we've got seven on that side and we've got 
too far, we've got six on that. So if you've gone too far, all you need to do is just unwind. That's better. So then I can go in and then cut like so. Okay, so we've got our bead capped bead there. So again, this just adds another little flourish. So to attach this to our chain, we're going to pick up our 0.6. Let me take another piece off. There we go. As I said, you will really use quite a bit of wire. But I'm sure we have all this in our stash. So we're going to attach it to our chain first of all. So we're going to go again, same technique. You'll be able to do this in your sleep after a couple of hours. Okay, so we've got that nice. We're going to add our link. So that feeds in, so we've got our chain. We're going to go in, and we're going to do our three coils. You don't have to do three coils, but I find that I, if you're gonna be doing rosary linking, you want the coil to be as much of a feature as the gemstone itself. So I've always done three coils, and it's a nice odd number as well. So we've got our coil. So let's go for, so we've got black. I'm going to go for, ooh, let's go for one of these small, Let's go for this one. This is a little soda light. So we're going to drop the soda light on. As you can see, we've got no two colours are next to each other, and also the sizes vary as well. So we're going to go in, going to leave a space, fold our wire over, and then we can uh, pick up our little capped bead we've just made. We're going to slide that on, and then with our flat nose pliers, we're going to hold that nice and tight and we're going to do our three coils. One, two, three. We're going to cut that off. Okay, so that's now attached. So we're going to add our next gemstone the other side. So let's go for, again, we'll start exactly the same way. Slide on our capped bead. And then we take our flat nose, we do three coils. I think that's why I love rosary linking this because it's a nice repetitive, it's a nice easy technique to do. And, and I do a lot of my thinking when I'm rosary linking and sorting out any problems I may have. And it's, and it's also a technique that you can have something on in the background like a radio or, or some music or the TV and it doesn't actually impede on what you're doing, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go for a vivid purple against that one. So again, this is another lava rock. Going to go in, round those pliers, same gap, all the way over, out to the left. And then I can go back in, hold that loop, and then do my three loops. One, two, three, that's my three coils. So you can see how quickly it starts to build up. And then we're going to cut that tail off. Like so. So that's our next little section done. So the next little motif that I'm going to show you that you can incorporate in your chain, there's nothing stopping you just sticking with an ordinary chain until you get to grips, but it's quite nice popping these, these little different little motifs in your design. So the next one I'm going to show you is one of my all time favorites. And this is going to be using a piece of point eight and again, a manageable length, so about eight inches, something like that. And then you're going to choose your gemstone. So I think I'm going to go for, let's have a look. I'm gonna go for the Amazonite. I think, because I think this technique deserves a really beautiful gemstone. And this, for this one, you're going to be using your other gauge of wire. So we've used the 0.8, we've used the 0.6, and now we're going to be using R.4. Now you need to cut off a length, again probably the width of your macrame board, so 30 to 40 centimetres, but all your cut off ends that you don't use on these little motifs you can use in your rosary linking you see, so, so don't throw any of it away. That's going to be perfect. So this is the herringbone motif, so let's pop these to one side. You need a bit of space for this one. And what we're going to do these are lens away 
okay, is we're going to take our 0.8 millimeter and we're going to thread our amazonite on like so. And then with our 0.4, about two inches from one end, we're going to place underneath and we're going to take the wire, so you place the, the shorter piece on the top and then we take our longer wire underneath and we pull nice and tight okay so the top of my wire the little short piece is going across round the back underneath and out to the right so you can see that I've got a short piece of wire and the longer piece of wire so at this moment as you can see it will slide up and down okay don't worry about that hold that gemstone and what we're going to do is we're holding the left we are doing in my left hand I'm holding the gemstone and the 0.8 wire running through the center and with my 0.4 I'm going to go round the gemstone over the top of the wire round the back and back to the front okay so I can take my wire around the gemstone over the top of that x that 0.8 wire round the back and then round to the front like so so that's one move so you can see we've got the wire around one side of the gemstone we're going to turn the whole thing 180 degrees and just move that little tail out of the way and we're going to repeat so we're going to take our wire round the gemstone now at this end we've already got a couple of coils because we had our little tail and we've also done our first wire wrapping and you need to make sure that this wire goes over the top of any small any of the thinner wires that are on your thicker gauge so we're going to take our wire over the top round the back up to the front so you can already see now we've got more coils at one end than we have the other 180 degrees we're going to take our finer gauge round the back of the wire that's already there so we always go around the back so round the back of the wire that's already there over the top round the back using your thumb and you're softening and you're warming the wire every time you do this round to the front and stop and you can see that we've got two outer edges of wire on one side and one on the other and what I tend to do is have five on each side so you have ten wraps all together so we're going to go round the back over the top round the back and over turn round the back over the top of the wire round the back of the point eight and over and again just make sure that you've making sure that your wire that you're working with sits behind the wires that are already there so that's sitting behind nicely round the top round the back and to the front and then we're going to go round the back bring to the front so let's count how many we've got so we've got three and we've got four so we've got three and four so this will be four and four okay and then let's do the fifth so we've got one on one side and then we've got our fifth on the other okay and then we're just going to take that round and then all the way around to the back so you should see now we've got that so that's the front so the wires are sitting below the gemstone and then on the back you can see we've got a little sort of nest that the gemstone is sitting in so at the moment I can see a few gaps so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to close them like so now you can if you wanted to just keep repeating those weaves until the entire back of the gemstone is covered no more of the front will be covered because those initial two wraps you did seal the, the, the point where none of the wires are going to be able to go in front. They're always going to go to the back. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go in and we're going to cut our long tail off and then we're going to cut our short tail off like so. Now as I mentioned earlier Point eight, you can rosary link with it, but you will. You, I think some of you might struggle. I definitely struggle with the, with the point eight as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip that motif over so we can see the back, and then using our wire cutters, we're going to cut about a centimeter. And using our round nose pliers, I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to fold it away from me, 
90 degrees. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to, again, about the same distance that we did our rosary linking, I'm going to curl that back. And you want the closure of that loop to be at the back of the motif. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to give it a nice close and a squidge. So you can see now we've got our motif and we've got our attaching loop. Do the same the other side. So there's the back. I'm going to go in, cut again to about a centimetre. Around those pliers, I'm going to go right to where the, the weave ends and I'm going to fold over 90 degrees and I'm going to curl that back nice and neatly. Do it in a few little movements and then just give it a little squidge to close. So I've got my motif and now I have my two attaching loops. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back to my point six, cut a little piece of that, and I'll show you how we're going to attach it to our rosy relink chain. And I think for a bohemian style necklace, having all of these different gemstones and then all of these different wire weaves surrounding the gemstones just gives it even more individuality, I find. So we've got our piece of point six. So we're going to start our next loop. So exactly the same way. We're all pretty expert at rosary linking now. And then we're going to pick up our last gemstone. Going to go in, make sure that's nice and closed. Flatten those pliers. And then we're going to make our three coils. It's always the same, always three coils. And then we're going to go in and give it a cut. So which gemstone should we go with next? Let's go with this, this is amazing. This is a faceted bicone hematite. And then we're going to go in again, same distance apart. We're going to fold it over. And then we're going to take our little motif, our little herringbone we've just made, and we're going to slide that on, feed it down. Going to go in and close with the links, it'll wrap three little wrap loops, like so. And then keeping hold of that wire, I'm going to add one more gemstone. So you can see now, because of the position of those loops, it sits exactly how we want it to sit. Obviously that's gonna move around when you wear it on the neckline, but I think that adds to its charm. Then we're going to go in and we're going to add our next gemstone now this will be the last gemstone. Obviously you'll keep going until you've used up all of your gemstones, but I just want to give you a little tip about when you join one end to the other, which is quite important. One, two, three, like so. We're going to cut that off nice and level. So I'm gonna go for, let's go for this African Jasper. This is quite a big dramatic gemstone. So what we're going to do is we're going to now, we're going to join one end of our necklace to the other to make it an overhead 360 degree. So I'm going to go in, it's always exactly the same, leaving that little space to do our three coils. Okay, so we can place that down for a moment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut off our little marker that we put at the other end. Let's feed that off, okay. Now, can you see, if I show you, sometimes that might happen, okay, where the links fold over themselves. Now, it's all well and good at the moment because we can open and we can separate it. But once you've linked these together, any of your, any of your fold overs, they will stay in your necklace. There's no way of getting rid of a, of a fold over once the necklace has been, has been joined to the other end. So, all I recommend you, especially if this is quite short, so it's probably not going to happen, but if you've got a long necklace, so can you see that's folded? So all we're going to do is we're just going to just feed it through our fingers and just lay it down and just make sure that all of your links are nice and open, none of them are folded. And then keeping it quite tight, all you're going to do is you're going to bring the other end up, feed it onto your link you're about to do, You've got no fold overs there. You'll never have a fold over in the necklace when you're wearing it. But if you do have a fold over and you join it together, that fold will always stay. It will always stay. So just spend a couple of minutes just double checking before you seal your necklace. And then we're going to go in and we're just going to do exactly the same. We're going to do our three coils. 
nice and neat finish. And then we're going to go in and we're going to cut off. Now this is a very short necklace, as you can imagine, but you can wear this as a slide-on bracelet. So in this hour, I hope we've covered your basic rosary link. We've added another link to make your chain, and I've shown you how to do how to rectify if you if you if you um, complete your link before you've added your gemstone. So we've gone through that. Then I showed you how to do your caging. Next step, I showed you how to do your bead caps using one section of wire. Then I showed you how to do your herringbone with your 10 wraps. And then I've shown you how to complete by joining them all together. And that's completely seamless. It will never come undone. You'll never lose a gemstone. It's probably one of the strongest techniques there is for your jewelry making. And if I bring my completed piece across, you can see this was from the bead scoop that I had. So if I lay it out, we've not got a single fold over. It's all sitting perfectly. And again, I'm just going to double check quickly. So I've put two browns together there. Maybe I would, I would change that. We've got the Amazonite, I've added bicones, we've got hematites. And as you can see, this, this is about, I don't know, that's probably about 70 centimeters long. And this was using all of the rounds from the gemstones. And then I've also made using, do you remember we had some of the little loops? So this is a piece I made. I've taken a head pin and I've gone through, a couple, I've got a couple of black onyx, and this is actually an opal I had in my original. You can just see the colors coming through. And I popped the opal in, and then I continue to feed the head pin through the black, I think this is black onyx, through the black onyx, through the opal, through the black onyx. The head pin then comes through the other side. You finish off as you would, and then I've popped it on a simple jump ring with a chain. And then I've also got a couple of pairs of earrings and remember we had those amazing loops that I was going to turn into a bracelet. Well, I've actually used some pearls from my stash. And again, I've taken the head pin, I've taken it through, I've popped a little 15-0 seed bead, little Mayuki either side of the pearl. I've continued with the head pin through the little hematite here. There's another pearl at the top. Finished off with a little loop, which you can do with a head pin, and then you've popped on to your shepherd hooks and as you said I've still got all of my chips and nuggets I can make for future projects and what I really like about the bead scoop is you can use it nothing else or as I've done with the earrings here you can use incorporate bits from your stash and and I think and I think that I think the I think the um, the bead scoop is a really good way of getting used to textures sizes colors and I always remember my first rosary link necklace I've still got at home on my desk and I purely use it as a color palette to think do those two go together do those two go together? Do those two go together? And it's just a really nice tool. And it's a beautiful piece of jewelry as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Loved that, that hour absolutely flew by. And just a quick to let you know that I'm back on Sunday the 10th. Obviously we're gonna be open door 10th. And before then I will pop the list of all the little bits and pieces you'll need to complete your project. And it's gonna be seed beading on Sunday with the most exquisite, we're not gonna tell you, I'm not gonna tell you. So I, that was close. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that little um, hour-long tutorial all about rosary linking and using your gemstone scoop. So have a lovely afternoon and I will see you on Sunday. Mm -hmm.